Good morning everybody, how are we all this morning? It's Ali Board here, all ready and prepared for your live Technique Tuesday. Thank you very much uh, for joining me, if you're joining me live, and equally thank you for watching me on Catch Up as well. If this is your first time watching live via the Facebook community page, Learning to Paint with Alison Seaboard, then you're very welcome, it's lovely to have you here. If you are watching live, then please don't be afraid, pop yourself up in in the chat say hello say where you're watching from and if I see it pop up um, then I will give you a shout out and even if I don't see you pop up what we have in the background is this gorgeous community of people who are all there ready and waiting to share your successes to commiserate in your artistic uh, endeavors if they're not going quite to plan but we have these lovely people all around to support you with your creative adventures so shall we see who's popped up first in the chat today it's Ali D this morning good morning everybody miserable day here in Dorset and that's how you know that we're live this morning I wasn't live last week unfortunately because I had the great honor of um, being part of the judging panel for the artist of the year competition with the SAA but yes it is miserable here in Dorset today so I'm going to be extra sunny for you all just to try to combat it who else have we got Martina over in Ireland Good morning, lovely. Julie, who is in Melbourne in Australia. It's very lovely to have you here. Who else have we got? Janice, good morning. Uh, lots of people saying it's wet in the UK. Uh, Maureen. Uh, Lynn, over in America. How lovely to have you here. That's fantastic. Uh, Anne, Joe. Who else have we got? Heather, Jilly, um, Thea, Andrea. Oh, they're coming in thick and fast this morning. I can't keep up with them. Uh, who else have we got? Uh, Heather, good morning to you. Andrea, wet in Derbyshire today. Garden needs it though. Yes, couldn't agree with you more. Chickens don't though. Chickens don't grow well in wet weather. Uh, Kat, good morning. Rabina, Sue, Anne, uh, Jan, um, and B as well. Yeah, she says it's chucking it down. Uh, Sandy, Chris, lots of lovely people in the room. Thank you very much for joining me. Now, like I said, unfortunately, last week I was not able to broadcast to you live because um, I had a, a clash in my diary. And next week I'm not going to be able to broadcast live for you either because I'm off on a sort of holiday next week but I will tell you more about that later. Good morning, Lou. Now, if you've been following along with the project, this is week 10, and this is kind of the last week that I am going to spend uh, on this project with you guys watching. Other things that I'm gonna do to this project are gonna happen behind the scenes. Don't worry, I'm not gonna keep it a secret. I will be sharing it with you, but I thought 10 weeks, do you know what? We're done with this. I need to work on it away from uh, the camera because it's things that uh, I need to really pay attention to the minutiae of it. So next week is going to alter. We're going to do something slightly different. Who else has just popped up? Jennifer. Uh, good morning. My dog is not impressed with the weather this morning. No, my dogs are not impressed. My chickens are not impressed. My horses are not impressed. I'm not impressed. It's too wet. I'm just what a moan. It's such a thing to moan about, isn't it? Uh, Patricia says it's murky in Suffolk. Uh, Joanne. Oh, Joanne, first time watching live. You're very welcome. I'm glad I saw you to uh, give you a shout out. And Linda, looks like you're a newbie as well. You're both very welcome. Uh, Jilly. Jilly says that she keeps uh, losing me. I don't think that's me, Jilly. I don't think it is. Everything's looking absolutely fine, my end. So uh, it might blame the weather. We'll blame the weather. Um, Rosie, good morning. Oh, and Viv is saying morning from hot, sunny Spain. Mm. <laughs> Not that we're jealous. Not that we're jealous at all. Now, Rosie has made a good point. Having trouble finding Technique Tuesday on this page and don't get the notification. Rosie, there's a really good reason for that. Because I have switched over to broadcasting on the Learning to Paint page, um, it's a, a group rather than a page. And so notifications on Facebook don't work the same way. And some of you may have noticed that Facebook has undergone a rather a lot of changes recently. If you're watching this via YouTube, or uh, via my website, then it's not going to make any difference to you whatsoever. But Facebook um, has been a tricksy little number the last few months, and there are lots of things still being ironed out. So all you need to know is that 
10 o'clock on a Tuesday on the Learning to Paint page. There will be some sort of broadcast there for almost every Tuesday. And like next week, uh, when I'm actually away from my desk, off on my exciting adventures, then I'm going to record something for you. So you can always watch it on Catch Up. Uh, Lynn is very good. Uh, Lynn is a prime example of somebody who you will see a lot in the group. She's one of the many names that you will see, um, who's very welcoming. So for all you newbies out there, keep uh, an eye on those people that pop up all the time because they're really there ready to support you um lots of people saying that uh you will they'll pop up so Rosie saying uh, that she doesn't see it on Facebook. Rosie, I tell you what, give me an email. So go to ali at learningtopaint.co.uk and I'll see if I can help you more with that. Right, let's get on to the project. Here it is, uh, hiding behind that bit of glassine paper as it has been for the last 10 weeks. And I actually haven't done an awful lot to it uh, since I did my recording with you last week. You can see it's got that little bit of shimmer going on there jury is still out on that it has to be said now what I do have to do is I've just seen her pop up is the lovely D is in the room now D is one of our fabulous admin team on learning to paint so you have D and Kath who uh, run it when uh, I'm not around to be able to do that and the unfortunate thing is next week one of the reasons that I'm not around to help running it is because D and I are off on adventures together so um, you're just gonna have to look after yourselves next Tuesday Day. we just need a day off <laughs> okie dokie oh, Amanda's saying that it's raining in Oxfordshire too so yes here is the bee here is where we got it to and I have to say even though it seemed like an awful lot of work I know some of you have emailed me and said blimey Ali that's an awful lot of work to spend 10 weeks over yes it is but actually this is just the start of a whole lot of detail that needs applying and things need pushing back and thing needs pulling out we need to put some detail in so I thought I'd share with you a couple of techniques for things that I uh, do to uh, bring my projects together I've just seen some uh, people pop up good morning Amanda Laura good morning to you she's also a newbie got a lot of newbies in the room this morning you're very welcome all of you Cheryl good morning um, Ali D you're spot on uh, Val you, uh, good morning to you too <laughs> so here it is and I thought what I would do first is introduce you to uh, two or three things that I think, not sure, but I think I'm going to use to bring this together. Now, the first thing that I'm going to be using uh, to bring this together is I'm going to go back to this pen that I used right at the start. It was the pen that I used to ink it all in. Not sure about what it was or how I used it, then go back over to the website. Um, I will show you later on where exactly you find Technique Tuesday on the website. So if you've been struggling with the website a little bit, I'm gonna give you a quick tutorial at the end of this broadcast to show you where to find things. Now, this was the pen that we did the outlining with right at the start. And you can see that my lines are still visible but where I have uh, put colour or gouache or something over the top of them, some of them have disappeared. Now, I don't want to use this all the way back over. Um, <laughs> morning, Steph and uh, Matt, a good morning. Um, I don't want to kind of go back over everything because it's not necessary now for me to have grey over everything. So this is a, a rather lovely um, kind of deep, it's called dark grey, I think. Is it called dark grey? Yes. So this is the Unipin pen made by Uniball, the Mitsubishi Pen Company, and it is dark grey. So what I'm going to do is particularly, it would be tempting to go back over the lines where the yellow is and draw them back in in yellow, but I'm not going to do that because... I want to use some colours on the things that are on the top. So I'm going to go back in with my grey pen and I'm going to go back over my lines to ink them in. Now this is quite a challenge, as you can imagine, because I have no leeway now really for making an error. I've got to be very accurate in going back over. But that's okay, a deep breath a little bit of patience and you guys watching me 
always helps to focus the mind. And so what you can probably see now is that this line is becoming tidier, neater, much more prominent and is outlining my B, making it nice and crisp. So let's get to the end of this line. It's a right old challenge to be talking and inking in very important lines all at the same time. But I think I'm good for it. There we go. Not too bad at all. And so what I've got now is a much crisper, more defined line going around that yellow there. What I will be doing is all of these lines that we've uh, got going on down here. Uh, they will be inked in eventually back in with that dark grey pen too. Now, black version of it we made some decisions didn't we early on in this project that some of these areas were going to be quite a solid black now because my paper so this is that that two rivers watercolor paper because my paper has got uh, an element of texture it's quite difficult to get a very neat solid line with a paintbrush so on the areas that are that lovely flat black that velvet black that we used with the gouache I can go back in with my black pen and I can define those a little bit more so here's a prime example along here round the outside of this black area so I can go back in with my pen again, a deep breath, a little bit of patience and going back in and tidying it up. Now I know that there's going to be some of you out there that say to yourselves, well why on earth Ali are you going back over everything to tidy it all up? The painting looks absolutely fine as it is. Um, why would you um, go back and be so pernickety over these last little details? And that the kind of the answer is in the question, really. I'm pernickety about these details because I want this to look really, really slick. And if I want it to look really slick and really crisp because it's an illustration, then these are the details that I need to pay attention to. Now I'm going to share with you something that can trip you up if you're not careful when you're inking back in after having painted. But I'm going to need the assistance of close up camera to be able to do that. Let's just make a small adjustment so that you can see it. There we go. Now you can probably see, wrong way Ali, you can probably see where I have inked those lines back in. Now here is where you have to be careful. When you're inking, particularly over the top of gouache, it can make your pen bleed. So you need actually quite a light touch so that you get nice sharp edges to your detail. If I hold my pen down for a long time, over the top of that gouache, I'm going to get it, oh, sorry, I'm going to get it bleeding outwards from the edge. So a light touch is required at all times and you need to be mindful of what it is that you're drawing back over the top of. You can also see there where the grey pen has gone in and I can see from seeing it in close-up camera how it's not quite as neat as I would like it to be. So this is how pernickety I am with these things. The attention is all in the detail. Um, so no, Heather, these are not the same as the Posca pens because the Posca pens are a much more liquid ink. These are a little bit drier. I'm going to get to Posca pens in just a second, if that's OK, if you don't mind uh, kind of just bearing with me on that. So let's go round uh, the outside part of our B. Now, this was in grey originally, but I'm going back in with a black to give it some definition. Let's move it down. Now, it might be that you can't actually see how much crisper and cleaner it looks. That's absolutely fine. But those of us with an eye for detail, or those of us, and I'm only speaking for myself here, with that kind of element of obsession about how neat and tidy our um, projects end up, will probably be marvelling at this and going, oh yes, Ali, it looks so much better. I am one of those people. I like to finish things to 
and absolute crispness. So hopefully you can already see that uh, this is much kind of neater and tidier. It's kind of coming together that little bit now and uh, we are starting to see a much more refined finish to our subject matter. I'm going to go round the outside of those antenna to tidy them up. Uh, that one's much better. And then we will go around. I've just got to turn it upside down. Just got to turn it upside down so that I'm not reaching across. And there's a little slip up that I made on that antenna, but my pen goes around it really beautifully and tidies all of those things. Angie is saying, you could practice inking over gouache on a scrap piece first to get the feel of things. Yes, absolutely. Um, do you remember that color chart that we made right at the beginning when we were experimenting with what colors I was gonna use? I was making all sorts of decisions about the media. Then yes, that is uh, the sheet that you could use to uh, make sure that it is um, that your pen is going to work in the way that you would like it to. So let's zoom in with this camera. We'll uh, pull it down a little bit and then we'll zoom in with that with the overhead camera so that you can see just how much neater and tidier that now looks. I'm much happier with that. I'm going to put some black pen around those eye shapes as two. Uh, eye shapes too just to finish it off and then uh, I'd certainly be inking around my B in fact let's do this leg uh, mum's in the room morning mum that's Liz Board for those of you that don't know um, it's not a coincidence that she has the same name as me and uh, she's being very kind and saying that my bee looks lovely thank you mum so uh, I'm going to do this leg for you to uh, show you what I'm talking about let's take our black pen and go around the outside of that first bit of segmented leg. So I'm not pushing too hard on the surface because if I push too hard on the surface, my pen is going to skip over the texture and we don't really want that. Now here, of course, we've got the conundrum of do I go back around with the gray pen that I used originally? Or do I now go back around with the black pen? Now here is a really interesting artistic conundrum. And I'm actually going to go around it with black rather than gray because I want this part of the leg to stand out over the honeycomb texture. So let's show you what I mean by that. Let's take our black pen and go all the way around uh, this section. So we're coming in, doing a little bit of tidying up as we go. That's better. Whoop. And then we've got this last little bit of segmented leg where I, if I put the black over the top of the gray, wow, this is quite a challenge to talk and ink at the same time. But hopefully now you can see, can't you? If I zoom back out, you can see how much that leg now stands out over the top of that honeycomb. And it's sometimes these last little finicky details that really make the difference between uh, your painting looking really good and your painting looking really great. So I'm very, very pleased with that. Now, that is something that um, if you guys weren't all watching, I'd be doing all over. So let's zoom back out and let's introduce you to uh, Posca pens, which are pens that I use all the time for finishing off my work or for adding a little bit of illustration, all those types of things. So what is a Posca pen? Let's choose one. Oh, well, let's break the habit of a lifetime and go for purple. <laughs> so this is a Posca pen. Posca is the name of it. Made by the same company that actually make the Unipin pens self same company okay but the difference between the two is this is a paint marker rather than a sketching pen what does that mean a paint marker is a marker where the ink that is in it is very liquid which means that it can be moved or smudged or give a really kind of flat finish to it now these are what would be classified as an acrylic paint marker so that means they're water soluble when they're wet, but they're waterproof when they are dry. 
um, and let's show you exactly what I mean about that. That's where we did our little metallic tests last week. Look. So they have a ball bearing in them, most of them, you can hear that. And uh, you need to shake them every single time because that's what mixes the ink together and means that it flows out of the nib really nicely. Now you can probably see this is covered in, in paint um, because this is a, a pen that I use an awful lot. Now if this was a pen that I hadn't used yet, I would need to pump it up and down. It's got um, a nib that is on a ball bearing mechanism inside on like a spring. So you pump it up and down. I'm not going to do it with this one because otherwise the paint will all just flood out. But to get it to flow down the nib, you need to kind of start it. And then I can sketch with it. In actual fact, after just saying I'm not going to um, pump start it, I'm going to pump start it. Morning, Susie, over on the Isle of Wight, which I'm hoping is a holiday. <laughs> so I'm going to wipe the nib. Now, if you struggle with Posca pens and they don't work in the way that you would like them to, this might be a little handy bit of advice for you to get them restarted. So I've got the paint marker here. I've cleaned off the nib on a bit of kitchen roll. You can actually remove the nibs which I'm not going to be able to do because no it's stuck in there you can actually pull the nibs out and wash them and replace them if you want to but there we go you can see that color flooded out straight away which means that it's going to work much better now yes look at the difference between the nib where it wasn't accepting the ink very well and the nib now two very different things all I need to do is to just suck some of that up with my kitchen roll, otherwise it's going to throw itself down the page. Now, what was I saying about it being water soluble when it's wet but waterproof when it's dry? What I mean by that is I can sketch with it, I can take a damp brush, you don't want a wet brush, you want a damp brush, and then I can move that colour so that I can get a very strong version of it and I can get a very pale version of it too. So I can blend it out to look like paint. Over here it looks like a pen because of the mark that is being made. Over here it's blended out to look much more like a painted finish and that means that I can use it for detail on my pictures but I can also smudge it a little bit so it's not going to look too much like here's a pen line. Now, what uh, the other property that it has that is rather fantastic is because I, uh, you probably heard me say that it is an acrylic paint marker. What that means is that it's water soluble when it's wet, but waterproof when it is dry. Uh, so, um, Ali D has just been uh, making a comment. There was a chap exhibiting at uh, Paw, which is Purbeck Art Weeks, uh, for those of you not in Dorset, who used Posca pens to do some beautiful designs on hats, boiler suits and other fabric. Uh, another idea for my mum. Yes, absolutely. Um, <laughs> if only we had the time, Ali, it'd be marvellous, wouldn't it? Um, so yes, they are multifunctional. They will go onto fabric, they will go onto ceramics. If you go uh, either onto the SAA's website or the Posca website, you'll also find out how you can bake them onto ceramics and glass, all sorts of things. I will show you a quick link later on in the broadcast um, of how to find that information really quite easily. So going back to our B, let's uh, get that last scene out of the way. Never enough room on my desk. Just never enough room. Now what I wanted to do was to show you some of the techniques that I might use. I'm going to work on one of the leaves that I've got here. I'm not entirely sure which one. I think I'll work on this one um, at the moment and uh, show you exactly what can be done with it. No, actually, maybe I'll do this one um, <laughs> to use the Posca pens. OK, so we've got this leaf here. Let's zoom in with the overhead camera so that as I'm working on it, you'll be able to see it in a lot more detail. There we go. I've just got to wait for it to slightly refocus. Hold on. Bear with me. There we go. It's a little bit better. It doesn't like being in too close. So we've got this dark leaf here. Now I've got uh, two Posca pens, these two greens here, which are very useful. I've also got some real cheap alternatives as well that I found uh, kind of on my travels around craft shows uh, and the like 
that are similar but you can see that you've got quite a nice natural looking greens here the because the posca pens are meant for street art graffiti that that was their original intent sometimes they do come in bright colors so it's worth shopping around a little bit to see if you can find others that do the same thing and i've got this one uh here which i started before the broadcast i better just check that it starts hadn't i otherwise yeah it's fine uh, otherwise i'd look a bit foolish wouldn't i <laughs> wouldn't be the first time so the first thing that i'm going to do is i'm over the top of the gray i'm going to use the pen to go back over to sort of obliterate the gray line and make it green what i can do as i'm making my way around that is use a little bit of water a very damp brush to soften that ever so slightly i'm not going to get away with uh, doing all of the outlining and then all of the softening because by the time i get there my pen will be too dry so I need to work it as I go. I'm almost tickling this surface because I don't really want to disturb the green that is underneath. Uh, so let's come in with this one and all I'm doing at the moment is tidying. I'm just sort of tidying up the edges of things and that is working rather nicely so already it's looking that little bit crisper now i do have to dry that because of what i want to do to it in a second so i'm just going to give it a very quick blast of heat Um, Anne has uh, just asked, uh, Anne Young has just asked a, a very a sensible question. Thank you very much for your question, Anne. Can you mix them like watercolour to grey out a colour that is too bright? Yes, you can. You can layer them up and you can do uh, all sorts of things with them. You can even, if you pump them into a palette, you can actually mix the liquid colour together um, before you apply it. So they're, they're a little bit multifunctional which uh, makes them very useful indeed. So now I'm gonna go back to the Posca pen because this uh, color I just love a lot. Now I'm gonna give it a really, really good shake. There you can hear the ball bearing has started. I'm gonna wipe the nib and this time I'm actually gonna restart it on my kitchen roll so that I know that the color is flowing on it. Now you can see on here before where I put some vague vein marks on it. I want to uh, pop those back in, but I want them to be uh, a paler colour. I don't want them to be too bright. What I want them to be is uh, a much kind of softer, more subtle colour. I'm going to come back to them uh, later on with another layer of something. But for the time being, I just want them in and that little bit paler. I don't want them to be quite as prominent as they are with the grey line. Now this is a really interesting part of how Posca works. Um, you can layer them up. So again, I'm gonna give that a bit of a dry. And just like gouache paint, you can uh, actually put one color over the top of another. So I'm gonna give it another coat of green. You'll probably see that this is starting to stand out a little bit more now. Um, sometimes you just have to be patient with some of your materials in the sense that it isn't necessarily gonna give you the effect that you want straight away. So because we can layer these up and because we know that they are waterproof and one goes on top of the other then uh, we can layer them up in this way so again that posca there might be something else that i do with it too i might decide to work back in for example let's just try that off and i'll give you an example of something else you might want to do let's give that a blast Now, because we really are in the realms of mixed media, um, I thought uh, I ordered myself a bit of a treat. Let's zoom out uh, just briefly. 
I uh, ordered myself something the other day um, to have a play with just because I saw the lovely uh, Anita Pounder, the in-house artist at the SAA. She was demonstrating with them and I thought, ooh, I need me some of those. And that's this, which are the um, Derwent paint pans. As you can see, very crisp and I haven't used it yet. And she was using this lovely um, artichoke colour, which I'd not seen before. But when I looked in the set, I thought, oh, they look very interesting indeed. So I treated myself to one of these. Now, I actually have no idea how these work, but I'm hoping that they work in a similar way to gouache in that I can bring some of these areas out. I can push some of these areas back and do other things with them. So uh, where should we go? Let's let's just try this yellow. So this is called Lemon and I'm hoping that it's got some really nice coverage. I could use uh, my gouache that I got before. That would be fine. I just thought it would be nice to see what else you can do with these. Um, I'm going to use a very small brush and I'm going to work back in between those veins. Let's zoom back in for you. Yes, Lynn, I could use a metallic Posca. There's all sorts of um, combinations of things that I might decide to use. Um, let's go back in and we can do a little bit of blending out to kind of make those veins really start to be prominent. There we go. And it's quite nice because this set is very portable. So if you don't like having an awful lot of stuff, sorry, that's out of shot. Um, if you don't like having an awful lot of stuff around you, then one of these little uh, paint pan sets might just be the answer. So we can put a little bit of yellow in there. So can you see how quite how pernickety I'm being now in tidying things up? And that's why this project is going to have to uh, be completed as and when I can behind the scenes. Please don't worry, as soon as I have finished it or I've got to a point with it, that I think, oh, that's interesting, that might be worth sharing. I will, of course, share it with you in a future Technique Tuesday. But for the time being, where I am just a little bit busy at the moment and disappearing off on my uh, jollies next week, then I wanted to share with you some of those tidying up techniques that you might want to consider. So you might decide to use something like the Derwent paint, ta paint pan tins. You might decide to use Posca. There is, of course, um, the option for using something like a watercolour pencil or an ink tense pencil or any of those types of things. You don't have to use pens or liquids or paints or anything. Have an experiment on a piece of paper to see what it is that finishes things off, that tidies things up, that changes things so that you're bringing your project together in a way that you find very satisfying. Now, as you can see, for the amount of time, it's taken me half an hour to finish those little elements. And obviously uh, this has got a long way to go yet, this project, but don't despair. I will bring it back in a future Technique Tuesday so that uh, we can talk about where it's got to, how I've pulled it together. So keep your eyes peeled for future Technique Tuesday and uh, what we can be doing with that. Now, I'm very briefly going to talk to you face on again ah. um, because I want to talk to you about what's happening in uh, the next few Technique Tuesdays. Don't disappear on me yet because I'm going to give you a little bit of a tuition uh, towards the end of this broadcast about how to navigate your way through the website. But I thought that you might like to see what it is that I'm going to be recording for you next week. So next week, like I said, uh, this time next week, I will hopefully be in a car bobbing on uh, down the M25 to uh, my friend's house in London. So I'm going to pre-record Technique Tuesday for you. But don't sort of don't don't abandon it because you guys are all still out there. There's still chat to be had. There's still discussions to be had. There's still finding out if each of you are all OK. Okay, so here's what it is that I'm going to be doing with you when I do my recording for you next week. Those um, techniques that I've just used in terms of sharpening up a project, 
bringing it together, all of those types of things. I thought it might be fun to show you two paintings that are almost finished. They're sort of 95% there, but they're just not quite at their finished state. These were two demonstrations that I've done for um, art societies uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago. Um, here we've got uh, a peacock. Some of you might have seen uh, variations of this peacock being shared by those who attended the workshop. Um, I'm going to use some of my Posca pens and do a little bit of detailing to bring this peacock together. And then I thought this one might be fun to finish as well. This is the beautiful Dora, one of my beloved chickens. And uh, she is not particularly finished either. She needs bringing together. She needs work to be done on her beak all of those types of things. So I'm gonna be using my pens, possibly the Derwent, maybe a little bit of watercolor to finish these off. So you can see that fine detail towards the end. So I hope that's uh, going to be something that interests you. Now, uh, as some of you know, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I launched a brand spanking new website, www.learningtopaint.co.uk. And I know as well that not all of you enjoy technology in the same way that I love technology. And a couple of you have been having a few issues with where to find things. My January classes went live uh, last week and I know some of you have been saying that uh, you're finding it difficult to navigate, that you're finding uh, some of the uh, things hard to find. So I thought we'd have a little bit of a discussion about the website, about how you can find things and where to go to find things. And then hopefully you can go over to the website, you can have a really, really good look and see what you can find. So let's go over to the website Website. All I have to warn you is if you are watching this live on Facebook, I am temporarily not going to be able to see your comments, but stick around right to the end. Don't disappear on me yet. And I will answer your questions if you have them. So before let's uh, just uh, change the uh, software. There we go. There is the live website. When you get to www.learningtopaint.co.uk, this is where you will end up. Now it might look different on either a mobile phone or a tablet. It might look slightly different, but the principles of the website are all the same. At the top, you have that learning to paint logo. You can see it with the uh, purple um, uh, wash behind it and the spatter, and you have that uh, menu. Now, if you're looking on a mobile phone, you will only actually see two things to the right of that. You'll see that little shopping cart logo. That's where you go to check out your purchases. So it looks like a shopping trolley, and it's got a little zero next to it at the moment, but when you put things in your shopping trolley, that number increases depending on how many things you've put in there. And uh, if you are looking on a phone or a tablet, you won't actually see those words. What you will see is uh, a couple of lines and what you need to do is to tap onto that and then you will see those words. So let's uh, just have a quick flick through of some of the things that you might find uh, that are useful to you or inspirational or otherwise. So let's have a quick look at free resources. So if I tap or click on free resources, there are three things there available. You have Technique Tuesday, so let's go and have a look at that first. That is where you find all of the previous B projects. So there you go, you've got that um, uh, B project, and I've called it part nine, <laughs> and that should actually be part 10, what was I thinking? Um, so the post is already up there for you to read today, and you can go through all of them. You can see how the B progressed, and all you need to do is to to click on the read more so let's click on that for you and you'll see the entire post now the posts always have something a little bit extra so here on the week eight post I shared with you the um, playlist that I was listening to on Spotify as I was um, uh, uh, finishing off part of my B and what you can do is you can click on those things and it will play the songs that I was listening to um, and there you can also catch up 
by watching the broadcast back again. What that will do is it will play and it will take you, um, let's hope the sound is turned off. Yes, it takes you over to uh, the YouTube channel and there you can see me rabbiting on in a previous broadcast. So let's go back up to the top. So to return, you need to tap or click on that learning to paint banner and it takes you back to the home page. What else have we got here? Art materials. So this is a place now, this has only gone live in the last couple of days. Um, this is a place where you can very quickly and easily find some of the things that I use in my broadcasts or my tutorials. Now, this is a page that is going to get expanded on. It's going to become much richer in its content. But at the moment, you can find very easy clickable links to products that you might uh, want to purchase yourself. Now, I do have to give you a bit of a disclaimer. Please, 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 please read the section that is at the top because I am part of what is called an affiliate scheme. And what that means is every time you click and purchase from anything on my website, I get a little tiny bit of money and it is a tiny bit of money. And I've said here, it goes towards a cup of coffee, coffee, a tube of paint or a new demonstration for you. So let's go down to the Posca pens. If I click on that link, what that should do, there you go, it takes you straight to the SAA site, which talks about um, paint and acrylic markers. So that's a nice, easy way for you to be able to uh, find things. Let's go back up to the top. I uh, don't know if you've noticed, but here's another part of the website that is going to be greatly expanded on in the next uh, few months, which is the free guides section. I know some of you have already taken advantage of this. So here we've got some things that I'm going to be sharing with you. Sometimes it will be a follow on a follow along project. Sometimes it will be a little bit of information. But all of these are absolutely free. All I ask is if you share them on social media or anywhere else that you just tell people where you found it. So let's show you the first one that I've put up here. We've got a little drawing project and um, I've put up there an observational drawing project for you. So again, if you tap on it or click on it, it takes you to a PDF that you can download or just follow along. And here we've got that poppy drawing where I teach you, this is a photograph that I took, I teach you the grid technique and how you can use it to construct a that beautiful poppy. And I'm going to be doing lots more of those. So what else might you find uh, on the website? Uh, of course, there are all my classes. So I know some of you got a little bit confused about the latest class releases when they got released on Friday. All you have to do is follow the buttons. So here we go. For example, there is, uh, this looks all kind of out of kilter at the moment because I've got it in a very small window. Let's just expand that a little bit. So here we go. If you wanted to come and join me at uh, Stour Payne Village Hall down here in Dorset and you wanted to uh, come and learn how to paint this apple blossom, which we're doing in watercolour, um, you see there it says, take me to the latest class booking page. So you click onto that. And then if you zoom all the way down to the bottom, there you go, there it is, and you can select it because there are other titles there too. You've got other things that I'm doing in person and you would select uh, Apple Blossom, that's going to get popped straight in. And it goes to the cart when you say adding the cart. You see it says added there. Well, if you go back to the top, do you remember I said about that cart logo? Can you see that there now, that shopping trolley? Instead of having a zero next to it, it has a number one next to it. And there you go, there's the checkout where you can uh, give me your hard earned cash. Um, what else have we got on there? Let's talk about the All Aboard Artists very briefly. The All Aboard Artists is a lovely community of people very much like yourselves where we meet up on a regular basis and there are three levels of membership. That at the top is where the current members log in. But down here, you can learn a little bit more about the different levels of membership that you can join in. So let's say, for example, that you wanted to join me for a tutorial and you wanted to be a Cerulean member. So you can go down here, you can read all about what membership entails. And there you can see, look, 
the tutorials that are coming soon. You even get an idea of what materials are going to be required. I like to let you know as much as possible. And then again, you scroll a bit further down, you select your level of membership after you've read all about it, and you go, oh, do you know what? I fancy doing that full moon on black paper. So you select that and you add it to your cart. You'll see it says adding, and then you go back up to the top again, and there you go. You can see that if I click on the shopping trolley, it has got those two items in there and you can get taken through to the checkout. So I hope that gives you a little bit more of an insight about some of the things that are available. Now there's all sorts of other stuff on the website too. It's meant to be somewhere that you return to again and again and again. So for example, you might want to look at my calendar. You might want to see what I've got coming up doing an awful lot of ballet teaching at the moment. I've got some tutorials coming up, but if we scroll down a, a little bit further, you can see that in October, I've got some workshops coming up. I've got a live broadcast for the SAA, and you've got a link there too. So whilst that workshop is sold out in person, you can attend uh, virtually, either from home or on catch up, and I've given you the link there. So if you click on that link, you will see if I logged in, that would be where you would join in with that workshop. So I very much hope that gives you a little bit of extra information about the website and about how you can use it. I know that I've confused some of you in terms of the Learning to Paint Facebook page and the Learning to Paint website. But the difference is that one you find on Facebook and one you find in the browser that you would ordinarily use. So I hope that's made that a little bit clearer. Um, I've obviously, like I said, uh, I'm in the studio all this week teaching lots of classes and tutorials and workshops. Ballet coming out of my ears this week. I've got lots of uh, children and adults uh, to teach too. And, and next week I'm gonna be off on my travel. So if you do happen to email me, my apologies, if I don't get to your email straight away, what I have done is give you a link uh, in that email reply to our FAQs on the website. I'll perhaps show you that at a different time. But thank you uh, for bearing with me with that tutorial. I hope that's helped you navigate your way through the website. And I hope the things that I have shared with you in my B project this week are going to be useful to you too. I'm going to pop off now and record next week's Technique Tuesday for you, which will still be available on the Learning to Paint page exactly as you have done before. Or you can watch it via YouTube, or you can watch it on Catch Up with that blog post, which you now know where to find, because I've just taken you through where to find that on the website. So I will be back live in a couple of weeks time. I'm hoping very much um, after and some exciting adventures next week and I'll share those with you too. But until I see you next time or in a tutorial or a session that I'm hosting this week, please do take lots of care of yourselves, won't you? I hope uh, that you can get a little bit of painting time in no matter what the weather is doing outside. So look after yourselves, won't you? And we will catch up very very soon. Bye bye.